Okay. So we are discussing about Maratha War of Independence, uh, which is generally considered as a period from 1689 to 1707. And we have seen that after the killing of Sambhaji, how Rajaram was um, released from prison by the Maratha noble and Esubai, Sambhaji's wife, and he was made next Chhatrapati. And um, uh, they had a meeting and they, uh, they formed a strategy that Rajaram should escape from Maharashtra. And he escaped uh, from Raigad and then he went to Jinji and uh, Raigad fell in Aurangzeb's hand. Esubai and uh, Shivaji too, who is generally known as Shahu, was uh, arrested by the Mughal. And uh, now the war theater has expanded. In Maharashtra, it was Ramchandra Pantamatya who was giving direction to fight against the Mughal. And uh, generally, Santaji and Dhanaji, they moved from Maharashtra to Karnataka and uh, they harassed the Mughal at uh, the different places. Jinji was also siege. Uh, and now slowly we find that the Maratha condition was becoming better. Many of the Marathas who were uh, in the service of the Mughal were now joining back to fight for the Swaraj. Well, we were here. Okay. So, <clears throat> You know, Aurangzeb, in order, he was very disparate that Rajaram should be caught and uh, Jinji should be won. So he sent a uh, number of Mughal uh, noble to south one after another. One of them was Qasim Khan, and his responsibility was he should prevent uh, Santaji and Dhanaji from attacking Zulfikar Khan. Zulfikar Khan was leading the siege at Jinji. And during this time, uh, in 1695, during the Shera, the Maratha nobles they had meeting at Vishalgarh. And at the meeting, it was decided that the Maratha jo noble hai, Maratha jo fighter se unko do bhago mein baat diya jayega. Ek jo bhag rehega, they will now attack the northern part of Mughal territory. You know, Mughal uh, they were having very extensive empire, and as now the forces uh, were concentrated, Aurangzeb's attention is now concentrated in Maharashtra. They thought, why not to attack Mughal territory? Now that will divert the attention or, or that will put more pressure on the Mughal. And at the same time, in the south, in the region of Tungabhadra, uh, Qasim Khan, one of the very important Mughal nobles, was sent against uh, Rajaram. So Qasim Khan ko harana hai, we need to defeat Qasim Khan and uh, save Jinji and, and Rajaram. Santaji, was given, uh, he took up this second responsibility. He said, okay, I will go to south and uh, try to uh, uh, meet the challenge of Qasim Khan so that Jinji and Rajaram is safe. And Dhanaji, he remained near Bijapur uh, because there was a possibility that if Santaji is moving towards south, uh, the emperor may also send another reinforcement uh, to help Qasim Khan and Zulfikar Khan. So in order to keep an eye on it, um, Dhanaji has to uh, re Dhanaji remain at Bijapur because it's quite possible that on one side Qasim Khan and on one side if Santaji goes and attack uh, Qasim Khan and on another side if the emperor sends another huge army, Santaji might be, you know, uh, trap between these two uh, Mughal army and that may lead to the disastrous defeat for the Maratha. Uh, meanwhile, Emperor Aurangzeb, he is stationed at Brahmapuri near Pandharpur and uh, at Santaji was marching towards Qasim Khan, he sent Himmat Khan against Santaji. Uh, and then Qasim Khan from the one side and Himmat Khan on the other side, they, you know, there is something called a pincer movement in the battle tactics. So you go on pressurizing the enemy so that he comes at one particular place and then you attack him from both sides. So they plan that we will do this pincer movement, we will keep on pressurizing Santaji so that he comes at one particular place and these both Mughal army will attack him. Now Dhanaji, he got a hint of it that uh, one side Qasim Khan and another side Himmat Khan, they are trying to trap Santaji. So he moved towards Karnataka uh, very rapidly to save the situation. Now, uh, you know, both uh, Marathas and Mughal, they try to outbid each other and Santaji and Dhanaji, they have now by this time on their fame. So this, uh, this made emperor very easy. And uh, Qasim Khan, he requested emperor that this is the situation. Santaji has came with a huge force against me and is supported by Dhanaji again. So uh, he requested to emperor that you should send another fort. And, you know, in, in Aurangzeb's court, there was this person called Khanzat Khan, and he was very young and he was very enthusiastic. At the same time, he had a very good reputation in the Mughal court. So this Khanzat Khan was sent by Aurangzeb in order to assist Qasim Khan. And uh, even Aurangzeb, uh, you know, there were selected 
a very capable bodyguard of Aurangzeb, a Mughal emperor. They were also sent with him. Unko bhi, bodyguards ko bhi bheja. And now he was very confident that now the situation will go in, in, in his favor. Qasim Khan was there, Himmat Khan was there, now Khanjad Khan. So huge concentration of Mughal army was there in south. Uh, now, you know, Qasim Khan, he thought Khanjad Khan, very important noble of Mughal uh, nobility, is coming uh, to help me. So I should give him a very befitting welcome. He is a good So Adoni Nam ki jo, jo, jaga hai Dakshin mein, वहाँ पर उन्होंने बहुत विशाल अरेंजमेंट की टेंट फर्नीचर डाइनिंग सेट्स दे दे वेर यू नो आस्क फ्रॉम अडोनी एंड लेकिन जो एक चित्रदूर के जो एक नायक थे जो छोटे से एक हिंदू जमींदार थे वो उनका कासिम खान के साथ में कुछ प्रॉब्लम हुआ था कासिम खान हैज डन सम इनजस्टिस टू हिम सो दिस पर्सन ही कम्युनिकेटेड विद संता जी एंड संता जी को उसने सारी जानकारी दे दी कि ये लोग कहां मिलने वाले हैं कहां पर शामियाना लग रहा है लगा हुआ है कहां पर वेयर दिस खानजात खान विल बी वेलकम बाय कासिम खान सो संता जी नाउ ही गॉट द इंफॉर्मेशन व्हिच आर द वीक पॉइंट एंड व्हेन ही शुड अटैक एंड एज ही वाज एन एक्सपर्ट इन द गोरिला वॉरफेयर एंड वेरी कैपेबल कैवलरी कमांडर what he has done is he divided his troops into three parts and jaha par kasim khan was preparing to welcome khanzad khan waha par jo shamiyana laga hua tha and all that arrangement was made for his buffet he one one part of his army he they just swept on that and they just destroy that decorated camp in the early early morning early morning when everybody was sleeping the camp was burned now kasim khan's camp was little away thoda sa pass mein tha jaha par unko welcome karna tha so kasim khan he he rushed to that place on the other side khan azad khan was also very nearby and it was decided that tomorrow morning they will meet so they kasim khan rushed from one side khan azad khan rushed from other side and santa ji was already prepared for this so he had his army divided into three parts to is army ko jo jo santa ji ki army which was destroying that camp when it was attacked by from these both forces the other reserve army jo santa ji ki they came on the scene and mughal jo the they were caught between the two army uh, <clears throat> two forces एंड uh, uh, ये जो uh, और जो तीसरी तीसरा जो उनका पार्ट uh, था दे वेंट एंड दे लूटेड द द मेन कैंप ऑफ कासिम खान नाउ द कंडीशन ऑफ द मुगल बिकेम वेरी वेरी बैड दे सो दिस टू खान कासिम खान एंड कासिम खान एंड खान आजाद खान दे दे जस्ट रश टू द प्लेस कॉल्ड दंडेरी एंड दंडेरी वाज हैविंग अ वेरी स्मॉल Sitar, a small fort, which is 22 miles from Chitaldurg, and the, in the Dandari fort they took shelter. So that Dandari fort was not very big fort; it was a very small fort, and many of the soldiers has to stay outside. And that citadel, that uh, fort was surrounded by Santaji. And inside the fort there was no adequate water, uh, and Santaji they confined uh, this Mughal; they did not allow them to go out. And uh, the condition became pretty bad. Food, whatever food was there, it, it was over. They they were not getting water. Now, Kasim Khan was an addicted to opium, and as he was not getting opium, he died on 20th November 1695. And somebody, according to one version, he was uh, you know not willing to show his face to Mughal emperor after this disgraceful defeat at the hands of Santaji, and he committed suicide by swallowing poison. As the condition of the Mughal became very bad, Khan Azad Khan, he appealed to Santaji's mercy and requested him that his life should be spared. And Santaji, um, he accepted 20 lakh rupees as ransom money, as well as he said, Ki, okay, I'll let you go, but all your baggage, which was nearly costing near about 30 lakh, all, all those luggage and, and fighting weapons, um, costly items, all that you should leave behind. So 30 lakh of baggage and 20 lakh ransom money, they how to live and Khan Azad Khan was allowed to go. In fact, you know, Santaji is, was a very strict disciplinarian. So when Santaji said Ki, nobody will attack the Mughal now, all the Marathas, they stopped and these people, Khan Azad Khan, even Khan Azad Khan was sent along with an escort from Santaji uh, safely to the emperor. Now, uh, so this was one of the very important uh, victory on the part of Santaji, on the part of the Marathas. Defeat of Khan Azad Khan and Qasim Khan was also defeated and he commits suicide or he dies because he did not get his opium. 
Now another Mughal commander, Himmat Khan, was uh, nearby. He pounced on Santaji, and uh, Santaji retaliated. His uh, Himmat Khan and his son, he, they both were killed by Santaji. Now when this news of uh, you know this disgraceful defeat of Qasim Khan and Khan Azad Khan reached the Mughal emperor, he sent another fresh troop under the leadership of under the command of Hamiduddin Khan, and these forces they were fresh. They swept upon Santaji. And Santaji's forces, they were quite tired after this war against Khan, Nazat Khan, then Qasim Khan, and then Himmat Khan. Mm, so they could manage uh, to defeat Santaji uh, in February 1696. So this happened uh, near about two, three, four months after the uh, defeat of Qasim Khan. Now, but in spite of this victory of Mughal, if you take the overall this war, uh, definitely Santaji comes out uh, as as much more better commander, and uh, he had um, uh, really uh, very very laudable victories. And these victories, it has further uh, raised the confidence of the Marathas, and uh, it definitely depressed the Mughals. Now, you know, Santaji, because of, uh, he was already an egoistic person, though very capable, uh, and he did not uh, had diplomacy. He did he lacked diplomacy. He, whatever he felt like saying uh, that he used to say, say uh, and even in earlier occasion also, he had certain conflict with Rajaram. Though Rajaram managed to pacify him, Ramchandra Panta Amatya also used to write him letters that uh, keep you cool, keep your... Keep control over your anger. But Santaji, though he listened to Ramchandra Pandamatya, he was basically an arrogant and short tempered person. So, uh, you know, uh, so this uh, because of this ego and arrogant attitude of Santaji, the uh, difference between Rajaram and Santaji it widened further. And Santaji, uh, being a very boastful about his victory, about his capability as a good cavalry commander, uh, he was a senapati, in fact, commander in chief. Uh, so he was disliked by Rajaram and uh, some of his nobility. And after this uh, spectacular victory over these two Mughal commanders, um, he straightway went to Jinji and demanded that I should be rewarded now. And this led to a serious uh, altercation, serious donome uh, vivad ho gaya Rajaram or. Uh, Santaji me and Santaji he accused Rajaram. Rajaram ko usne ka ki you are lacking courage. You are not coming out and forwarding, uh, you fighting with the enemy. I am fighting. You are just staying uh, as a Chhatrapati sitting on the throne. And but I, being a Senapati, I have a capacity to make and unmake anybody as Chhatrapati. Now this was too much for the peaceful person like Rajaram. Rajaram was generally known to be very peaceful, but this kind of statement was too much. And then he dismissed Santaji from the office of Senapati. And Dhanaji Zadha was now appointed as a Senapati main commander in chief of the Maratha army. Santaji, along with uh, his forces, he withdraws and near a place called Aivargudi, the war was fought between Dhanaji and Santaji. But in this, Santaji's forces were quite strong. He was quite capable, and Dhanaji was also equally capable commander. But nevertheless, in this battle, which was fought in June uh, 1696, Dhanaji was defeated. Now here, uh, you know, uh, during this episode, as Santaji was a pretty short-tempered uh, uh, person, uh, there was a person called Amrutrao Nimbalkar. And this Amrutrao Nimbalkar was caught. Uh, he was fighting from the side of Dhanaji. And he was caught by Santaji. And this Amrutrao Nimbalkar was uh, trampled under the feet of the elephant. And he was a high-ranking noble among the Marathas. Nimbalkar family was a well-known, respectable family. And this Amrut Rao's sister, who was killed by Santaji by trampling under the feet of the elephant, was married to a person called Nagoji Mane. And uh, this person was from Maswad near Satara. And this person, Nagoji Mane, he was in the service of uh, Aurangajeb. So the sister of uh, Amrut Rao Nimbalkar, she constantly uh, told her husband that you must take revenge of uh, such a brutal killing of my brother. And Nagoji Mane was always looking out for uh, Santaji's movement. So Santaji here, uh, you know, here after, but Santaji's condition became little bad. Uh, Rajaram, he ordered his soldier, including uh, Senapati Dhanaji, that Santaji should be captured. And now as uh, Rajaram has removed Santaji uh, from the position of commander-in-chief, so many of the people, they started leaving Santaji. And Santaji has to flee from Karnataka to Maharashtra. And near Bijapur in March uh, 1697, see in, in uh, the battle in June 96, 
Dhanaji was defeated, but now uh, within uh, one year or so, uh, the condition of Santaji became uh, relatively bad, and Dhanaji uh, was now more liked by most of the Maratha nobility. So he got a lot of support, and near Bijapur, a battle was fought between the forces of Dhanaji and Santaji, and Santaji was severely defeated by Dhanaji. Many of now Santaji's followers they left him, and near Satara in Mahadev Hill. This brave but arrogant uh, Santaji, he has taken shelter uh, moving from a place to place. And uh, Nagoji Mane, who was now looking, uh, uh, you know, he was tracing the moment of Santaji. Uh, he, he was getting news, his spies were tracing the moment of Santaji. And in June 1697, when Santaji was taking bath in the river and his arms were away, he was suddenly attacked by some people and his head was cut off. And Naguji Mane, he took he, this head and presented it to Brahma, uh, Aurangajeb at Brahmapuri. And Aurangajeb was very happy because if you remember, it was Santaji who attacked Aurangajeb's camp and uh, cut off uh, the, the uh, you know, the, the tent uh, crown and uh, tent, uh, it fell. Uh, uh, of course, Aurangajeb was uh, sleeping in some other tent. That is how his life was spared. His life could be saved. But otherwise, uh, it was Santaji who was feared by the Mughal. And uh, Santaji's death had brought a lot of relief uh, to Mughal. Uh, it, it made them happy, obviously, but it was a loss to, to Marathas. And the emperor before this had announced prize on Santaji's head. And for this, uh, Nagoji was richly rewarded. Uh, the death was quite a blow to Marathas. He was a master of guerrilla warfare, no doubt about it. But uh, interestingly, though, Santaji was killed and Rajaram removed him. Uh, but Santaji's brothers uh, and later on their son, they remained loyal and faithful to the Marathas. Mm, the Santaji's brother, they cooperated with Dhanaji. Even though Dhanaji and Santaji, they fought battles, Dha Dhanaji being a commander of the Maratha army, uh, got cooperation of Santaji's brother later on. Now, when all these things were happening, uh, Zulpikar Khan, who was, uh, you know, uh, surrounding uh, the fort of Jinji with the Mara, with his soldiers, um, uh, they he was praised by Mughal emperor that you must press on and and conquer the fort. And in December 1697, the Raja Ram he escapes from Jinji. Uh, he comes back to Maharashtra, and then in February 1698, the fort was captured. As I told you earlier in my last class, uh, the event in in sab baaton se aisa lagta hai ki Zulfikar Khan aur Raja Ram mein kuch understanding zaroor thi because Zulfikar Khan allowed Raja Ram to go he even allowed his wife also to to go later on and then later on he captures uh, uh, Zinzi and Aurangzeb ko khush karne ke liye wahan par jo ek Shankar ji Prahlad Nira ji jo ek uh, Maratha noble tha unko pakda gaya and he was put to death so that emperor doesn't have doubt and uh, Zulfikar Khan was congratulated by Aurangzeb and he was given title of Nusrat Jang uh, already Raja Ram and Zulfikar Khan. Probably these indicates that they had some understanding. The royal ladies they reach Vishalgad, Raja Ram Pale Maharashtra Gay Badme Kipatniya Vihapara Gai. Raja Ram uh, he again, you know, uh, wrote a letter to Aurangajib uh, so that peace can be established between Marathas and Aurangajib. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> it was refused by Emperor and Rajaram, after coming back, he stayed at a place called Satara, and now Satara became uh, the new capital uh, that was uh, started functioning as the capital of the Marathas. Uh, Rajaram, after coming back to Maharashtra after so many years, he went on extensive tour of Maharashtra, and he established contact with uh, the Maratha noble as well as the in charge of the different forts. And there, after uh, such an extensive touring, somehow he says that the Mughals are on the decline now. They are not as strong. They are not amb as ambitious or as disciplined that he has seen them in 1689 and 90. Now it is the same in near about eight, nine years. The, the continuous warfare is going on. The Mughal commanders and soldiers, uh, and Aurangzeb ki bhi tabiyat kharaab hone lagi thi emperor was not keeping good health to inki mrutyu ke baad mein kya hoga kyunki aam taur par jaise hi mughal emperor ki mrutyu ho jati thi aam taur par uske bachcho mein aapas mein ladai ya hoti thi ki next emperor kaun banega to jab uski tabiyat kharaab hone lagi aurangzeb ki to iske baad mein kya hone wala hai is baat 
की तरफ कई लोगों का ध्यान गया जो मुगल नोबेलिटी थी दे स्टार्टेड कॉन्सफरिंग और दे स्टार्टेड हैविंग ग्रुप सो दैट आफ्टर औरंगजेब हम अकेले ना हो जाए हमको कोई मार ना डाले वी शुड आल्सो हैव आवर पेशेंट ग्रुप ज्यादातर लोगों का ध्यान फिर इसमें लग गया दे वर नॉट वेरी इंथुसियास्टिक टू फाइट वॉर अगेंस्ट द मराठास so here we see that uh, now the because of all these factors the marathas gradually started becoming uh, stronger and stronger in 1699 nemaji shinde uh, he uh, defeated and captured husain ali khan the mughal governor of thalner uh, then go devgad jo ki yahan par hai vidarbha ke aas pass mein hai the gond king of devgad buland bakht iske upar jab mughalon ne attack kiya to usko bhi ye uh, buland bakht he could resist that एंड राजा राम के पास में उन्होंने अपने एक अपना एक मैसेजर भेजा अपना एक संदेश भेजा कि लेटेस्ट ज्वाइंटली फाइट अगेंस्ट द मुगल एंड आफ्टर दशहरा इन राजा राम विथ सेवरल यंग लीडर्स दे यू नो ही स्टार्टेड द कैंपेन अगेंस्ट द मुगल देवर खंडेराव दाभाड़े परसोजी भोसले धनाजी जाधव एंड दीज वेर दीपल हु लेटर ऑन मेड देर मार्क इन द मराठा हिस्ट्री इन्होंने बाद में मराठा मराठों के इतिहास में काफी नाम कमाया और जब ये व्हेन राजाराम स्टार्टेड विद दिस पीपल ही सेड कि आई एम गोइंग टू लूट सूरत एंड द एम्परर ही सेंड ह्यूज फोर्स टू प्रिवेंट हिम फ्रॉम गोइंग इनटू गुजरात सो द वॉर वाज द बैटल्स वर फॉर एट डिफरेंट प्लेसेस बिटवीन द मुगल एंड द मराठास बट इन बट बिकॉज ऑफ सच ह्यूज प्रेशर एंड जुल्फिकार खान अगेन वेरी केपेबल मुगल कमांडर केम चेजिंग राजा राम राजा राम हैज टू टर्न बैक कम बैक टू महाराष्ट्र बट कमिंग बैक टू महाराष्ट्र ही इवन राजा राम विथ हिज कमांडर्स नाउ ही अटैक ब्रह्मपुरी ब्रह्मपुरी वॉज देर वॉज वे देर वॉज द कैंप ऑफ औरंगजेब एंड हियर प्रोबेबली ट्राइड टू फ्री शाहू बिकॉज शाहू एंड एसू बाई वेर इन दिन द कस्टडी ऑफ औरंगजेब बट इट वॉज ऑफकोर्स नॉट नॉट सक्सेसफुल uh so though you know though these attempts were failed uh, but rajaram's later uh, it, it it indicates a lot of confidence uh, in this young uh, maratha king like he says you know we are we came at sihagar you know, he gives description and suddenly we have attacked emperor senapati dhanaji nemaji shinde and all other leader they they furiously attacked the imperial camp and they even captured emperor's daughter along with several of the prominent family Uh, so you know uh, the animals and the convey and the food uh, that was being supplied to the mughal mughal camp that was being attacked by the marathas time and again and uh, <clears throat> raja ram now in his later he started talking to the noble he nobles maratha nobility uh, that don't give any importance to emperor now he is going to be very soon defeated so we see the scale is now going in favor of the marathas uh, but aurangzeb was not a person to give up so easily he sent his army uh, to attack satara the new capital of uh, chatrapati and uh, this was besieged by the mughal rajaram's health now unfortunately deteriorated and he went to sihagar but at sihagar on 2nd march 1700 at the age of 30 rajaram dies rajaram's one wife ambika bai she goes sati she uh, burned herself with the dead body of her husband but these two of his wife that is tara bai and rajas bai tara it is called tara rani also uh, they played uh, they played a very important role later on in the maratha politics so rajaram's the first phase of uh, the maratha war of independence when rajaram was the leader of the marathas is over now so let us sum up uh, the rajaram's contribution and his character so you know at the time she was his date rajaram was very young he was 10 years old and he spent after that nearly 9 years of his life in imprisonment of his elder brother sambhaji half brother uh, his mother was believed to put to death or she has committed uh, suicide by poison swallowing poison swera bai uh, there is no scholarly text like text left by rajaram like sambhaji has done so we are not sure about uh, his education uh he during his uh, rule he had no never shown a dashing general chief uh neither he had shown an exceptionally administrative capacity he was very quite gentle by nature uh but you know somehow uh, he had a capacity to gather the people together and it was the untimely capture and death of sambhaji that really brought him uh, to the throne that made him a king 
uh, and probably otherwise he could have never become a king. And even though when he was ruling, he said, Ki, I am ruling as a trustee of Shahu, Shahu, the son of uh, Sambaji, who is in the uh, imprisoned by Aurangzeb. Uh, I am ruling as his trustee. So, you know, he had uh, that kind of mild nature. He was not very ambitious person. And maybe because of that, he was liked by the Marathas. He was willing to listen to his counselor and he was looked upon as a spirit of Shivaji. Uh, his chief advice, uh, advisor, Prahlad Niraji, uh, was a very capable person, very wise person, and he mostly ruled on his advice. Unfortunately, he was killed by Zulfikar Khan later on when Jinji was captured. Uh, he was served by a very capable warrior like Santaji and Dhanaji and another capable administrator like Ramchandra Panta Amatya. And uh, understanding the need of the time, he gave free hand to warriors. You attack territory and capture the territory. And here, he said, Ki, whatever territory you are capturing from Mughal, you can, you know, uh, levy tax, you can collect the tax from there and you can submit uh, some of the, some portion of it to the, to the central treasury. So he departed from the policy of Shivaji. Shivaji was not in favor of giving Jagir. Shivaji was more in favor of giving a, uh, regular salary and he said Ki land is not to be given but he departed from uh, Shivaji's policy and gave, gave, gave uh, land grant but that was a need of the time probably because everything was in shambles everything administration was disrupted uh, there are certain of his shortcoming uh, like he could not handle uh, the the rude and arrogant Santaji uh, it is a capacity of an administrator that uh, understanding the nature of the different people working under him unko us tarike se handle karte aana chahiye unfortunately santaji jaise capable vyakti ka murder hone se wo unko bacha nahi paye and that was a loss to the marathas uh, eh bhi kaha jata hai ki rajaram was quite weak in body and mind and even there is certain acquisition that he was an addicted to opium as well. We are not sure about it. But nevertheless, under the leadership of Rajaram, Marathas has given a very tough resistance to uh, Aurangzeb. And Aurangzeb uh, could not really conquer all the forts of the Marathas that he wanted to do. The theater of war ex expand ho gaya from Maharashtra to Karnataka. And we find that slowly the Marathas are becoming gaining an upper hand. Uh, the next phase uh, that is uh, uh, the, the Maratha War of Independence under Tarabai uh, that, that was fought between 1700 to 1707. Uh, we will take that class after 10-15 minutes. Today I want to finish that topic as well. So you can take a break of 10 minutes or so, 10-15 minutes. Uh, it is 12... Uh, 37. So 1250 exactly we will start again.